In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the XML destination within Task Factory from Pragmatic Works. The XML destination does exactly what it sounds like it does, and it, it takes uh, any sort of uh, source input uh, and outputs it to XML. Uh, in this case, what I have is an OLE DB source, with, which is just pulling 100 rows from the person.contact table. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the actual destination itself. The first thing that you see in here is the output file settings. And what this is saying here is tell me where you want this data to go. Uh, so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to output my XML to this, this uh, uh, file connection manager to person.contact.xml. You always have to select a uh, file connection manager, but you can actually replace that data or that, that path by selecting a variable as well. So if you're saying, if you're going through some sort of for each loop, uh, you can come in here and select a variable that, that, is, uh, that stores the path to your XML uh, file. Uh, and replace the actual file connection manager. Uh, but that's only going to be used if you're using a, a, the it says XML destination in some sort of loop. Uh, next thing you see is the mappings, and this is the most important part of this. Uh, you can actually come in here and select all the columns by clicking the check, or check sign up here, or check box, uh, and you can actually uncheck them as well. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go through here and, and just check a few of them uh, that I want to use. Um, it doesn't really matter and additional contact and so here's the input column this is where your data is coming from uh, this XML name is the actual name of the element or attribute uh, that's going to be outputted to XML so if you wanted it to be in a specific format to say uh, I don't want the contact ID I want it to be just ID uh, you could do that there I'm gonna leave mine alone uh, and again all those are editable the next is a style, okay, and so this is telling it what do you want this to be outputted as, an element, an attribute, an element with C data, and what the element with C data does is wraps the data that is being pulled from the source uh, in a C data tag, and element with XML data, and what that does is if you're storing or, or pulling data from your source that is true XML, um, and you don't want it to be formatted the way that the writer, which most uh, XML writers, is they, they replace the, the brackets and, and uh, any sort of characters like that that can be kind of like HTML characters. It will replace those with um, formatted characters. And so we'll see an example of that when we run it. But in this case, um, I'm going to make this the attribute. And I'm actually going to make one of these C data. We'll make the element the, the address or email address. Uh, and then we're going to use this additional contact info as our uh, element with XML data because we actually are storing data uh, in the person.contact table. It is actually XML. Uh, the next thing you want to do, or you can do, is you can tell um, how you want to handle null uh, data coming in from your source. And the default is to just output an empty attribute or, or element. And so that's just going to put the, the element out there with, as empty. Uh, you can tell it not to output the attribute or element at all, or you can replace the null value with a defined value. And so what we want to see here is I know the middle name um, doesn't have values for everything, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to replace it with no middle. And so when we actually output our, um, our XML out, we're going to see it replaced with no middle. And this here, over here, is the order, and what that allows you to do is reorder the, the way that the uh, XML is outputted. And so in this case, I'm just going to move up suffix a little bit. And so we have suffix there um, and before first name and, and before any of the name elements. All right, so if we go over the Advanced tab, what this is is uh, the, the first one here is the XML document settings. This here is the root element, and what we mean by that is that if you take a look at the preview, the first element that starts off the, the, um, the document is called the root uh, document or root element. I'm going to remove the output header so we can take a look, closer look at that. Okay, so you, if you change that to something else, you'll see it changed in the preview. So we've changed the documents, and now it's documents. Uh, the root namespace, so we can say uh, root namespace, and we will see that it, names the, it puts the XML namespace in there. We don't need that. The row element name, again, each row is prefixed with something. And so, again, you can change that to row or rows, however you want it to do that. Uh, and, and, again, the name, so row ns um, has the root, the XML 
row namespace. Uh, okay, so I'm going to take that off. This uh, option here is pretty important. What it does is there are certain characters that are invalid um, in the far in, in the eyes of XML, and most of them are characters that are non-printable. And what I mean by that that are, have a character uh, or ASCII code of one to nine, um, and there's some other characters below 65. Or below A and B and all all the all the regular characters that are printable, um, that if you try to export those out to XML, uh, it's going to fail. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, you can't fix it. Uh, the only thing you can do is replace it uh, or remove them out of the out of the uh, XML data. Uh, but what happens when you check this is it slows down the export significantly and the reason for that is it's checking all the data uh, for these invalid characters uh, now this is only going to be affecting you if you know the data uh, that you have coming in is from some sort of mainframe system uh, or that you know that you're storing those those invalid or, or invalid in, in the eyes of XML or those, those characters that can't be printable um, there's more information about in, uh, unprintable characters in the help file. So if you want to check out pragmaticworks.com and look at the, the help, you'll see what we're talking about as far as invalid XML characters. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do here is look at the encoding or some of these formatting settings here. So again, the encoding, what that does is, um, I'm going to put the XML header back out here. Uh, is it, this is the actual encoding of the XML. And so you'll see here that we have UTF-8 if we change it to something else. Uh, we'll change it to UTF-32. You'll see it change here. Um, so I'm going to change it back to UTF-8. Uh, add a new, lo uh, new line after each row. Right now you see that we have a new line after each row. If we remove that, we should see it go away. And it's just one big line of code uh, or of XML. So I'm going to put that back in. Uh, indent, indent elements. So if we take a look, uh, there's no elements that are indented. And what that does is actually puts the each element on its own line and indents it. So that's good if, if you're sending this to somebody uh, that needs it formatted in that way or is going to read the XML. Um, but if, for, for if you're trying to save space uh, or using a system that doesn't really care about new lines and all that, uh, you can leave it alone without the, the um, uh, indents. Uh, add a new line after each attribute. You can see right now that each attribute is on, its, um, on the same row as the, the row line. And so if we put that there, uh, we see that it, it drops down to its own line. Uh, output XML header, again, if we saw that before, it's just going to remove the header from the from the output. And so you, you've you seen how you can preview the output and everything there first, so um, no, no need to go over the preview output anymore. Okay, so that's the basic settings. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to go ahead and run this, and I just want to see where that person.contact XML is going to. I believe it's SSIS, or CSSIS, yep, sure is, okay. So we're going to go ahead and run this. Okay. There we go. So we're going to open this up. Oh, that was kind of a mistake. I think that's going to try to open it up in something else. Let's see what it's opening up in Windows Explorer. Great. Uh, no, I don't want to open it up in Internet Explorer. Get rewind here. Okay, so there we go. And let's look at our person.contact.xml. We're just going to open up in Notepad. All right, so there we go. Now we can see a couple things here. One is that here's your no middle. Um, two, you can see that we've wrapped the, the email address in C data, and you can see here this additional contact info. It, this is the actual data coming from the data source. So you see here that we haven't replaced any of the, the brackets in this. Um, if you wanted to format that in that you don't want it to be outputted as XML, you can come back in here, well, not to the source, uh, but to the destination, and you can change this to uh, just regular element and we'll see a completely different output in that when we run this now okay and so if we look at the 
Here we go. All right, so you can see now that it's it's actually formatted this, all the brackets. It's taken all the brackets out and formatted them. Um, I'm trying to go through here and see if I can see anything else. So yeah, all the brackets are, are replaced. Um, and you can see that it's just is formatted the way that XML usually does if it finds brackets in the data.